today I wanted to create this video and I want to talk about something important um, that I think a lot of guys are missing when they're <clears throat> meeting with people they spend all this time prospecting and when they finally get in front of someone they're sharing a lot of things but they're but they're leaving out the, the most important thing and so I want to talk about that today and hopefully this can help you guys uh, write some more business convert some more clients into convert some more prospects into into clients and so I just wanted to to really talk about some of that today and you know, I used to do this too, and, and it's because that's what they taught us to do. You know, when you get in front of them, if you're new, leverage the firm, leverage how long they've been in business, you know, 100 years, how many clients they bring on, access into management, how many, you know, 5% 5, 5 return on average, yada, yada, yada. And um, that's all well and, and, and great, but the fact of the matter is, is you know that doesn't really help you connect with your prospect and there's one thing maybe two that's always present at any presentation whenever you're speaking with someone and, and the first one is, is fear which is at the highest level and uncertainty and certainty which is at the lowest level and uh, you know, in order for anyone to make a decision on anything, they've got to have a minimum amount of fear because they're scared and they don't really understand what's going on and people just don't want to be tricked. And so what you have to do is you have to minimize that fear. And as the certainty rises, uh, the fear will lower. And, and this is very important. And when you go and start talking about percentages and rates of return to the average person, you know, that confuses them. That doesn't make them feel smart because they don't understand it. And it also um, doesn't lower their level uh, of fear or raise their, their certainty. And a lot of people don't realize, but you know, 80% of people don't have a college degree. So when you're meeting with people and you're assuming that they understand things because we're analytical people and we like to talk about numbers and all of these things, well, people don't understand that. The only thing that they care about is how can this help me either, you know, in, in the future for retirement, not running out of money, how this can protect my family. Those are the things that are important to them at the end of the day. And so that is why they're meeting with you. And so, that's why you need to share with them why you want to help them. And so, you know, the first thing is, is sharing your backstory. And a lot of guys miss this and they think that this isn't important, but this is probably more important than your presentation. And there's a saying that people don't care if you're debt free until they know that you're, that you were just like me. And so, you know, when, when, whenever I go into a, a situation before I start talking about anything, you know, you want to build rapport. You want to share with them why you got into business and why you're helping people. And a lot of guys miss this opportunity to really lower their prospects guard right up front. Um, especially in the beginning where you should always have an agenda, number one. Um, because people like to have control and when they're not in control, they're not paying attention because they're not focused because they don't know what's about to happen next. So number one, always have a, have an agenda and state that in the beginning, but then two, share with them your backstory of why you got into business. And, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with this, I would go and research a, a Ben Duffy. We teach this in our training, um, in the AUM training program, by the way, but, uh, you know, you always start out with your story. And I remember um, when I was uh, when I was an advisor, uh, I would share with my clients my story about my mom. And in 2015, um, she had a lot of, of health issues and a huge health scare. And what, what made us through is, is that she had something in place uh, that really saved her life. You know, she had to stay in the hospital a lot longer and it really maxed out her insurance and then she had to stay in a really really uh, expensive place for a long period of time 
and it was something like between like, like 3,500 bucks a month, right? And we had to do that for a long period of time. But if it wasn't for our, what we had in place, then she wouldn't have been able to do that and probably wouldn't have been here today. Um, you know, we did expensive testing, went through these doctors, but we had these things in place. And so that's why I do what I do is because I know the power of having things in place and it, it, it really helps your decision making. It allows you to have a lot more time to think so that you don't have to just react and, and, and do things out of desperation. But it also um, enhanced my conviction around insurance and the power of having things. It made me take a look at my own financial plan. It made me focus on the things that are really important because what father wants to be remembered as the guy who spent all of their money on Christmas gifts, but when he left, their, fa their family was in, uh, in a bad financial situation. And so when you share that story with people, somewhere in that lies a place where your prospects can lower their guard and people learn a lot by stories and it really just calms people down. And this is very important and key to building the beginning of a relationship. And it also does um, one other thing. It really humanizes you, right? because there's a saying that everyone is ready to meet an insurance person. And the way people think about things and the way people do business is, you know, honey, oh, uh, insurance person's coming today. Oh, we, I forgot to tell you, honey, we gotta go and meet with Arturo um, to talk about some, some insurance. And, you know, their game plan is, is when we get there, honey, we're just listening. We just get in a quote. We don't make any decisions um, on the first, uh, on the first meeting and you know we just want to think about it don't get emotional stay calm um, you know we, we don't want to be sold and human beings do not like to be sold on thing um, and so that's why this is important and the reason why uh, a lot of guys are missed out on sales is because you haven't connected with your prospect and people buy off of emotion and justify with logic. And a lot of times we're doing the opposite. We're going in saying, you know, this is what you need and it makes sense to you of why someone should do something, but not to them because there's no emotion attached to your company being around for a hundred years. There's no emotion attached to, you know, you being able to, to service so many clients since you know, God knows when and policies and numbers and all of those things. And the reason why that's not important to them is because that's all about you and your company. And that really doesn't help them. But when you when you humanize yourself and start to really talk about things that are important to you, it really shows that, you know, you're a person that's trying to help them, but you're also an insurance person, but you're someone that that is a human that's meeting with them heart to heart. And, and this is something that guys are really missing out on and you really need to make sure that this is a, a part of your story. And uh, this is very helpful for guys who, like myself, I, I didn't even know I was doing one, but I did one later yesterday. And uh, I had to go and speak with the person's significant other. And all he said was, yeah, honey, I'm thinking about doing this and it's gonna cost this amount of money uh, I think it's a great idea. I spoke with him. I just wanted to, to run this by you. So now, guess what? The, the, the wife is like, she's only thinking about, wait, you're about to spend how many thousands of dollars on what? Okay, I need to speak to this guy. And so when she comes to me, she is, you know, her skepticism is at a 10, uncertainty at a zero. And now I have to go back and share with her my backstory. And as soon as I did that, the wall started to come down. She started to connect. She could see that her husband kind of felt the same way and he needed some help. And ultimately, you know, I had to do the presentation twice, but I knew it was important because if I would have just started out going and, and, and showing charts and numbers and RLI, she wouldn't have cared about that. But when I shared my story with her, I've been able to help advisors to have some predictability and consistency in their business, fully automated. 
And when I shared that I used to, you know, have late nights, an agreement to work late nights with my wife and um, the Tuesdays and Thursdays with my late nights. And when I told her about that, that now I was able to be home, you know, majority of the time I'm at home. When my daughter gets off the bus, I make sure that I'm at every game. I take her to mostly every practice that she connected with that. And, and, and so th this is very, very important, very subtle, but very important. And a lot of guys want to start uh, talking about all these things that they know, but people don't really care about that. And um, this also works well with handling objections. And a lot of guys miss this. Um, and when people have objections, that means they're still uncertain about the product, the process, or they're uncertain about you. And a lot of times when people get objections, they handle them the wrong way. And I probably shouldn't be giving this one out, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think that this is probably something that can help you guys kind of go to the next level. And we really focus on this in, in, in our, in the AUM training program, but I'll give you this one for free. And that is, is, is handling objections and telling stories. And so traditionally what everyone does is they go through the whole presentation and they ask guys to take action. And what happens is, and what happens is, is that they handle objections with a rebuttal. They have something written out that they think is important and they have scripted this out but they don't really focus on, they don't really focus on uh, what the prospect is saying. And so what happens is the prospect mentions something to you and you completely bulldoze right through that and start to, to answer that question for them. And that never works because the person doesn't feel heard. It's just like being in an argument with your spouse if you're so busy worried about you know your point of view and what your what your your rebuttal is you're not really hearing the other person and so what we teach is storytelling so the first thing that we do is, is you know we, we let them finish we never interrupt the prospect but then we um, we agree with them and then we share a third-party story of someone just like them that achieved the goal that they wanted and was able to have success. And so how do we do that? Whenever prospects start to give you objections, uh, we we teach, you know, that guys will visualize them saying, you know, well, well, I can't afford it, or I need to talk to my wife, them putting up their dukes and, and ready to fight. And when you do that, their guards up. And this is where guys can kind of go into using their script to try to handle objections, or just get into a debating match. And this, really really um heightens the tent the, uh, the tension in the room and whenever someone is in that mode they're never going to buy something from you because you know it's basically you telling them what they're doing is wrong and they need to do this and nobody need wants to be told you well, need to do this we'll right so instead of doing that we do what i call um you know first we we, we listen to them and we never cut them off and then we agree with them and then we kind of deflect it um, and, and tell them that we hear them but then you know we ask them is there any other concerns besides this one and usually they'll say no this is pretty much the, the major one or if they do then you know you kind of talk about those and then you know we share a third party story based on you know someone very similar to them that's a client of yours that wants the goals that they have achieved and we share a story about them achieving the same goal that they wanted. And this is very, very powerful. And the reason why this is powerful is because, you know, five minutes later, they've already forgot that they have given you an objection. And so now you're handling it. And the first thing it does is, is when you agree with them, when they, 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 they have an objection, you know, they start to get confused and, and, and really kind of like lower their guard and they lower their guard because they're like, wait a minute, what? I can't afford it. You're like, yeah, man. I mean, it's a lot of money, you know. I, I agree, it's, it's pretty expensive. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to pay that. Um, but, you know, that, that sucks. 
and then you start to tear, share with them a story, you know, if they were you know, buying a TV, right? You know, I, I had this, this client named John and he wanted the, the 60 inch, but he wanted the, 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 the 4K one um, and, and you just want the 1080p one. Um, but he, he wanted his to play video games, but, but what he found was, you know, he was about to get his, his income tax check, right? He was gonna get a refund, and he knew that he could, could put it on hold and come back in, in, in a week or so and get it. And, you know, he really wanted to build his own man cave. He just needed to convince his wife that it would be okay. And after he did that, you know, he really, he really enjoyed this. Now he was able to have family over. He was able to, he was able to, um, you know, have company over. It really helped his relationship with his wife and they had a social life. They really felt like they were, you know, um, just doing well. And then once you share that story, you know, then you just ask them, and this is very important, you know, is this, the same result you were looking to get and this just really convinces this really allows the the story really allows them to really connect and engage but really just convince themselves that you know this is something that they want and something very amazing happens when you're telling the story psychologically people have the aha moment that they can achieve the same goal because they're just like the person in the story that you said. So they subconsciously start to convince themselves that they are, you know, somewhere in that story and they can be just like John, right? And this is very powerful because now you're not telling them, John, you need this TV because of this. They're coming to the realization themselves and this allows them to have an aha moment. Um, and now they're like, yeah, I, I want that same outcome that John had. I want to have a social life. I want to be able to invite people over for movie night. I want to host parties. And, and people like to do things for, for status. And so um, I'm sure you guys get the point right now, but this is very, very important. And this is how you guys can handle objections. And a lot of guys are missing this. They're missing sales and leaving a ton of deals on the table. And it's because you're trying to handle an objection and square it off with people. But instead, you need to kind of olay it and share a story or testimonial. That way that people can really have, you know, an aha moment for themselves. And, and now you're not telling them what to do. And it's a no-brainer for them, right? Because in order for them to get the result that John had or your client had, then they have to go through the same process. And then it's, you know, then you ask him at the end, is this, are you looking for these same results that John got? And once they say yes, now they're telling you that yes, they want the same results. And then you can go back to ask them, okay, well, you know, what's kind of holding you back? Why don't we go ahead and get started? And so um, to kind of wrap this up, um, storytelling is very, very powerful. And a lot of agents and advisors are missing out on this and they're going off and rattling off a lot of facts and numbers. But the truth of the matter is, is nobody cares if you're debt free until you know, they knew you, you were just like me. And so, you know, I hope this was helpful. Hope you guys uh, implement some of this. And even if you don't uh, think that it works, just try it out and see if you don't, you know, be able to convert a few more clients and, and do some 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 greater things and so this is Arturo signing off here and you guys have a great day